2014, all incandescent light bulbs are going to be banned. That's right, and replaced with the new light bulbs that have mercury in it. That's right, the government's going to force a phase out of the incandescent light bulb and replace it with mercury light bulbs. Evidently, they're concerned that the incandescent light bulbs use too much power, and if you have coal power plants, that means more pollution and more mercury in the water. So just put the mercury back in your house. And guess what you get to do if it breaks? You have to call a special company, and it costs about $2,000 to clean it up. You have to leave the room and open up all your windows. $2,000 cleanup requirement. I had no clue where he got that from. First off, burning coal gives off a lot more than just mercury. It gives off sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide, key molecules in the creation of acid rain and smog. It gives off arsenic, you know, rat poison, and it releases cadmium and other nasties into the air, one of which is mercury. Now frankly, I have no clue what he's talking about when he says you have to call a company which costs $2,000 just to clean up a broken light bulb. It's true, if a mercury bulb breaks, that you should air out the room, and it's suggested to leave the room to let it aerate. But cleaning procedures don't require anything more than simply picking up broken glass and sweeping up the powder. It's best not to touch broken glass in general, and to avoid ingesting the powder. So use things like paper to pick up the glass and powder, and maybe a piece of tape to pick up any tiny fragments or residue. In some municipalities, states, or provinces, you may be asked to bring broken light bulbs to a local recycling center or a proper disposal center. If you want to talk about net loss versus gain, I think the money saved on energy is greater than the time and money spent cleaning up light bulbs once in a while. Furthermore, the benefits for the environment, due to the fact that we're using less energy, just dwarfs that. Now here's my problem with phasing out incandescent light bulbs. Overall, I'm positive it will save on energy consumption, but here's a point to ponder. Most of the energy that an incandescent light bulb loses is lost as heat, which goes into heating your home. When you use an energy efficient light bulb, there isn't as much heat given off, so you end up using your heater for heating your home. Now, if your home doesn't need to be heated, use energy efficient bulbs, you'll save money. But if it's winter, an incandescent light bulb is approximately just as efficient overall. Also, any outdoor light bulbs, like ones that light your front porch or are in your garage or things like that, should certainly be switched to an energy efficient bulb in order to conserve energy and your wallet. Here's the big drawback, and this is more about aesthetics, but many people probably notice it. Mercury bulbs only emit the primary colors of light from the visible spectrum. We've developed as a species under the entire visible spectrum of light as an energy source. The light emitted by these bulbs can seem a bit stale or artificial. I frankly don't feel that way about them, but I understand that some people do, so it's worth bringing up. About the actual energy conserved, first, some definitions. A kilowatt hour is how many thousands of watts you've used in one hour. Now, here I have a 13 watt energy smart mercury bulb, and an average incandescent bulb uses around 60 watts. A watt is a joule per second. So using one joule of energy in one second is one watt. Now the average cost of electricity is about 0.17 dollars per kilowatt hour. I'm getting that from this site here. It's just a rough average. So the difference in energy costs between using a 13 watt bulb versus a 60 watt bulb is about 46.8 kilowatts versus 216 kilowatts in one hour. So per hour you'd save at a rate of 17 cents per kilowatt hour, 0.3 cents per hour. Yeah, I know, it doesn't sound like a lot, but multiply that by 24 hours per day, 365 days in a year, for 5 years, and you have saved $124.52 in energy costs over 5 years. Just take the bulb costs into account and you'll get your net savings. The advertised savings here is $38 in energy savings over the 5 years, I'm guessing, and that's because they used 10 cents per kilowatt hour. My overall message about energy efficient bulbs is that they will save you money on energy consumption on warm days and when using light bulbs in areas that don't need to be heated. However, completely phasing out incandescent bulbs seems unnecessary. Rather than forcing it upon people, I'd rather see education programs being put out to let people know the advantages and disadvantages of both bulb types. My overall recommendation to conserve energy is to use energy efficient bulbs, turn down the heat at night, wear warmer clothes indoors, you know, that sort of thing. Video description for the Environmental Protection Agency's issue on proper cleanup and disposal procedures of energy efficient bulbs. Not one civilization in the history of the world with de jure private property rights and rule of law has ever experienced a famine. Famine is defined as running out of the food supply. Never happened. And it doesn't explain why there has never been a total crop failure in any country with de jure private property rights and rule of law. H.T.W. Squared's definition of famine here is a bit deceptive. He says no nation with the jure private property rights and rule of law has ever experienced a famine. But what is a famine? I'm just getting this definition from dictionary.com. Famine, noun. Extreme and general scarcity of food, as in a country or large geographical area. 
I think we'd all agree on this definition. Now, I don't see total crop failure or complete lack of food anywhere. I see extreme and general scarcity of food, i.e. insufficient amounts of food. Now, in this, I'd agree to a point, it is extremely rare that there is an insufficient amount of food. For contrast, though, right now on a global scale, there is a sufficient amount of food for the entire world population, yet we see famine and starvation. Why is this? Because of transportation issues, and because people with money get food, people without it don't. Sure, under your definition, there's never been a famine, ever. But the way you're saying it, it almost sounds like you're implying there's never been a food crisis in a nation with de jure private property rights and rule of law. In the late 1840s and early 50s, during the Irish potato famine, Ireland had joined the United Kingdom. But when blight destroyed the potato crop, approximately one million people starved, and a million more were forced to migrate. Indeed, this was the blossoming of the Industrial Revolution. It was an age in which the economy was driven by capitalism, and there were de jure private property rights and rule of law. At the time, for those one million who starved, the food they were supplied was certainly insufficient. It was a famine in a nation with de jure private property rights and rule of law. Was there a complete lack of food? No. Was there an insufficient amount of food for the entire nation? No. But the end result remained that over a million people starved to death. But then I realized, this is YouTube, and unless someone wants to buy me an intro that's copyright free, go ahead, but that video's staying up for now. Because who the heck cares? In regards to this clip, it's quite simple what Thunderfoot was going on about. You've just misinterpreted it. You said buy a copyright free intro. Why would you need to buy a copyright free intro? The fact that it's copyright free means there's no need to buy. This statement makes no sense, it's just semantics, but I'm pointing it out to you because you didn't seem to get it the first time around. And as for who cares, your video categories are labeled as news and politics. The purpose of your videos is to inform people about how the world works, and you had the world spinning backward in your intro. I realize that you've since gotten a new intro, but this reflects on your character. Why should people trust you as a source of news and information when you're not even willing to expend the minute amount of time to correct an error like the world spinning backward, which is in every one of your videos? I've decided to save the topic of his ignorance of climatological science for another video. Peace.